Talk about a biz Morgan on censored. Well, from the formation of Wham to his untimely death, George Michael was an enigma as well as a gigantic talent. But one person who knew the real George was his former longtime partner, Kenny Goss. I'll speak to Kenny in just a moment for his first television interview in five years. But first, uh, there's a new well, final work, I guess it is. It's a documentary about George Michael's life. It claims to give an insight into his very public career and his tumultuous private life. Let's take a look at a clip. You have a right to walk away. The music industry takes away that right from every artist it signs. George had raised the bar to a whole new level. It was a revolutionary thing. And I want to leave songs. I believe I can leave songs that will mean something to other generations. George Michael, who was without a doubt one of the most talented singer-songwriters this country, in fact, the world has ever seen. And his death was obviously tragically early. And uh, we all miss George. No one, I guess, probably more than my next guest, who's Kenny Goss, who spent 15 years with George. Kenny, it's great to talk to you. Hey, how are you? We don't really know each other, but I knew George quite well and had some great times with him. Uh, well, found it him... seems like I know you from... from uh, weren't you in the showbiz editor or something like that yeah. years ago? When you were, when you were, I'm a lot older than you, but you were. <laughs> it must have been 20 years, maybe. Yeah, well, you've, you've aged better. It seems than like me. I know you. Uh, yeah, I used to do. I used. I actually oh, ran. No, I, uh, I ran some of the papers, but I used to. I used to see quite a lot of George. Well, and you he, ran the Sun for a while and the News of the World, no? Or yes, the and also and the, the Daily News Mirror. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I had yeah, some. Yeah, yeah. I, I had a lot, lot of dealings. Awards at the Daily Mirror. I, I was going to say about about my sort of dealings with George was he was always incredibly candid. You know, I can remember some dinner parties where he was just, you know, outrageously funny but very revealing. Um, I did some interviews with him where he was the same. He was a kind of heart-on-the-sleeve kind of guy. And I, I'm just curious, this documentary film, it has a lot of people talking about him. It doesn't have you. And I always felt that of everybody I, 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 around I, George's life, you would have known him probably as well as anyone. I uh, would definitely say uh, he would say that as well. Absolutely. Uh, what you're very correct about is George uh, was one of the most honest people I've ever met, and sometimes uh, he almost used honesty uh, as a weapon. Not, and I mean weapon in, I'm going to tell you this, I need to tell you this, uh, I've done something you need to know. Uh, right. And uh, uh, so you always got the truth from him, absolutely. I, I, by the way, the documentary that you are talking about, the one that you and I did, correct? No, I'm actually talking about the new uh, one, which is coming out now with all the big stars in it. Uh, you're talking about the Simon Napier Bell film, right? Oh, which okay. Is you know, I don't know a lot about that one. Right. I do know about it, but uh, I haven't really watched it. Uh, I think I know what it says, uh, uh, but, but uh, I, I wish you luck. I mean, well, I think the, the point that people have made about it is it's a, it's a bit of a... not a whitewash of his life, but it may not be as real as it should be, and that the reality of George's life was that towards the end of his life, certainly the last decade or so, he was on a pretty downward spiral into, you know, a very difficult kind of lifestyle. Uh, he was pretty honest about it to me, that even when he was with you, and you've been very candid about this as well, you know, it was a kind of open relationship uh, of from, course, so, yeah. from, his, from his point of view. He had lots of... Um, of I think from his, he was probably, and I'm not saying anything... I would say he uh, probably was more open than me, mm. uh, but um, I loved him very much. He knew that. The public perception of George is what it is. I'm having trouble hearing him. Can you guys, can you all... Oh, can you hear me? Can you? Pierce, this, this, well, this ear thing keeps going out. I apologize. Uh, oh, all right, don't worry. We'll just I'm bear sorry, with I'm, you. Messing your, I'm messing your whole show up. <laughs> no, not at all. We, we get to, um, it's, just, it's a live TV. Don't worry about it. I just wanted to ask you, uh, can, can oh, you hear yeah, me now? That's, you can hear me okay? I can hear you now, yes. Yeah. I just yes, wanted yes, to ask you, what, what do you think the biggest misconception about George was that the public may have had? Um, I'd say the thing that I always tried to remind myself of, and this really wasn't a misconception, I think most people knew this, was I don't think he ever thought he had a good-looking moment in his life. Uh, uh, I always tried to remind him or tell him, you know, you look really good today. Uh, you're a handsome man. Uh, it was very difficult for him. Uh, and, uh, and it seems so, I, t I think to many people, I know that's well known, but I think to many people, they would think he would have a much higher sense of 
hey, I'm a good looking guy. Mm. And uh, you know that, I'm sure. But uh, that's something I'll never forget. One of the first times that we've probably been together two weeks, and he, uh, or maybe three, he came home and he said, uh, Darling, what's good looking about me? And I said, That's why are you asking me that? And he said, He told me, he said, Someone said you were better looking than me. And uh, I said, uh, Darling, uh, what was the, and I asked him the question again because I really had never had a guy ask me that question. And uh, I said, I, there were so many things I should have said, but I said, your lips. And uh, now if it had been a girl or anybody that had more time, I'd have said, everything's good looking about you. Don't you get it? I'm, I mean, you know, he was, you know, always voted most handsome in the world, all these different things. And, uh, but what he did know uh, was that he was a talented man and mm. a good songwriter. I mean, he was, he was without um, a, a doubt. I mean, he was one of the greatest, the greatest talents, I think, musically, this yeah. country and the world has seen, certainly in my lifetime. I think um, that's the thing that always amazed me. Um, uh, I am probably the most unmusical person that he could have ever gotten with. Uh, he always said I had the same five CDs in my cars when we met. And uh, I can honestly tell you, um, I can't remember the words to the songs he wrote about me, and it's uh, it's a shame. I, since he's been passed away, I've actually started reading the lyrics, mm. and uh, actually I started doing that before he passed away. And he said, "Oh my God," <laughs> he said, "I liked you better when you weren't reading them." Because <laughs> you know, I would ask him almost childlike questions, like like I, this room you say that I'm in. Uh, where is this room? And, and this chair, he'd say, mm. darling, it's symbolism. And I, and I said, okay, I uh, said, but uh, are we gonna see each other? I, I said, you're an atheist. Uh, uh, you know, the questions like that, that were very childlike, but, but it made me think, and I did understand what symbolism was, but I said, I'm always an, an angel in all the songs. And I said, are you my angel? And I said, you called me a drunken angel, darling. <laughs> I, I said, I said, I said, you know, if you know how angels work, they don't go, they don't, drunken angels don't get many assignments. <laughs> you know? and, I mean, Kenny, you had, uh, so you had, you goes, had 15, uh, you had 15 years with George and it was a great love affair. Well, thank with... God you said that because uh, it was 15 years. Yeah. And, um, uh, and he said something once and it, and it was, I said, darling, why did you say we weren't together two and a half years? And, and you know, he had already started kind of, you know, he, not being necessarily as present as he, we'd gotten used to, as he had been. And his answer was just simply, um, darling, I don't know, I just did it. Mm. And, um, uh, and I said, okay, uh, how are you? Uh, yeah. And towards the end, is it right to say that, I mean, would you have been worried about the state that George was in with all the drugs I was, and the, I was the worried stuff. about him all the time. Yeah. Yes, yes. I mean, but please don't say that the wrong way. It's, it's, if you love someone, you're worried about them. You know, it's, uh, that time when I said that, you know, flushed his drugs down the toilet, that's just because I was worried about him. Mm. Uh, uh, I'm so cautious now uh, about everything I say. And it's, you know, it's a tough way to live uh, because, you know, I mean, I, I, you know, I was quite pleased for uh, 14 years being long suffering. <laughs> you know, I didn't really like, because uh, if you Google my name, it often says long suffering partner Kenny Golf or long suffering <laughs> Texan. And, uh, uh, and uh, but, you know, I really did try to be always be there for him. And he knew that, you know, um, I, I, he, he, I'm, I know he chose me to please his mother. Mm. I mean, he told me that, you know. Um, he had this view that his, my mother, his mother and I was very much alike. And in a lot of ways we were. I would say I'm probably, uh, not probably, I'm much more uh, a guy that uh, plays by rules. Mm. Uh, and she was kind of the same way. I mean, I'm also not judgmental at all, but uh, you know, uh, if you, if a speed is a certain, uh, you, you're supposed to drive at this speed. I drive at that speed. If you're supposed to, you know, and he really played by his own rules, 
Kenny, when uh, you heard when you heard and, and that, that really worked. When you heard that he died at such a, a horribly young age, obviously you would have been massively uh -huh. shocked. But what were your emotions about it all, given that you'd split up from him, but you'd stay um, close? And um, we'd stay uh, close. Uh, uh, but I, you know, we all expected him to die. Uh, uh, I had spent so much time uh, when we lived together. Uh, being worried about him, uh, um, uh, and honestly, uh, you know, he hated the fact that I worried about him so much. Uh, he, what's the line he says in the song? He says, uh, "I could see it in your eye when you looked at me that way. It tears me in two. Mm. and uh, it really did. Uh, I just didn't know what to do. And Kenny, what's, you know, what's your... Um, I had two when, really close friends. When you, when you look back on your relationship, all your time with George, what, what's your favourite memory? Uh -huh. If I could relive a moment you had with him. Uh, um, there's so many that... Uh, and what I, what I always do notice is that, that there was a lot longer time that I was incredibly happy with him than I was worried with him. Like, I might watch an interview with you and go, wow, you looked good then. Or Parkinson, and and he was, and he always said such wonderfully kind things about me. Mm. Uh, it's, and that you know that makes me feel good because you know, he he always said that I saved his life. Uh, I, I think that's you know a bit uh, much, but uh, I really did try, and and he often got upset with me because I don't think I ever called him and didn't say. Darling, please. Uh, a lot of people love you. Yeah, I don't think he ever knew just how much he was loved. He was an amazing character. I loved George. I thought he was fantastically entertaining, but, you know, brilliantly talented. English and great, people great guy. forgave him for everything. We did. We did. They did. I mean, it's, it was. You know. You know did. why, he, Kenny? Because he, he had literally. He had a fantastically British sense of humour. And it got him out of every scrape oh, he ever he got did. into. <laughs> it was the humor I, got him out I, of every the scrape. He was, of he our was life. absolutely oh, hilarious company. I mean, yeah. Kenny, I've got to leave I it there. Say it's the it's great. funny bits. I'm sorry, we've got to yeah, uh, yeah. I've got to get Thank you. Thank you. Kenny, it's great to talk to you. Uh, I'd always wanted to have a chat with you. I love George. It sure is. Uh, uh, I, I wish I had more time to talk to you. I just want to say he was one of the most wonderful men in the world. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I want people to remember that. I'm so glad that. A true, honest documentary is out. Yeah. It's such a relief. Well, I think there'll be Thank a lot of talk about George too. and a lot of uh, stuff about both these films that have come out. But I appreciate you joining me tonight, Kenny. And, uh, you know, it'll be good to actually Thank remember so uh, what a genius uh, he was apart from everything else. All the best. Yeah. Thank you. Have a great day. Take care. Bye-bye. George Michael, what a talent he was.